We're members of the Digital Technology Group here in the Computer Laboratory and we work on a whole range of um, computer science and engineering problems and most of the projects involve smartphones in some way. And there's a little gang of us who are also quite keen on drones and we have hexacopters and quadcopters and, and fixed wing aircraft. And sometime last year we uh, decided we'd try and collide these worlds together and we would see if we could make a fully autonomous drone aircraft with a smartphone as the pure source of all guidance, control, navigation, compute, and everything else. So I'll show you Captain Buzz, which is the name of our app that can fly a fixed wing aircraft. This is our graphical user interface, and as you can see, it looks like a normal artificial horizon indicator that you'd see in an aircraft. So the phone contains everything that you need in order to control an aircraft. So we've got accelerometers, gyroscopes, barometer, compass, there's GPS, there's plenty of computational power, there's multiple radios. The phone can work out its roll pitch and yaw, and we can then use that to control an aircraft in order to fly straight and level or turn onto a certain bank and go to a certain GPS waypoint and so on. Pitching is when you're rocking backwards and forwards like this. Rolling is when you're tipping to the sides like this. And your is what would normally be your compass heading. So it's your, your, uh, your magnetic compass heading. The phone can detect all of those aspects. The trick is then how we pass information to the plane itself in order to fly. There are multiple ways we can pass information out of the smartphone, but the one we decided to go for um, was the headphone jack. So this horrible, horrible buzzing noise you can hear, that's the music that flies the plane. So we chose to pipe control messages straight down the headphone jack. What you can hear there is the control messages. So normally the kind of thing that comes down a headphone jack is some music, some beautiful combination of sines and cosine waves that's some symphony or some rock music or whatever you're listening to. The messages that go down electrical cables to control servos, which are these little motors that turn the control surfaces of the wing, they're very, very simple electrical signals that look like this. They're just square waves that are of a certain periodicity. And in order to determine how far you want this thing to turn, you send either very narrow pulses or very broad pulses. And depending on whether you're spending narrow or broad, the motor either turns a little bit or it turns a lot. So the horrible buzzing you can hear coming from the phone is the audio representation of these square waves. And so that's all we needed to do to fly the plane. There's a left and right headphone jack and we have left and right control surfaces. So we only need two channels of control to fly a delta wing glider like this. And all of the gubbins we've got in here, we've got a normal receiver so that I can fly the plane manually to a safe height. That's what this guy's doing. This is a, a buddy box, this little blue guy. That allows me to switch between myself flying the aircraft and the smartphone flying the aircraft. So that's a little safety feature. So I can always take back control. And this board here is just an amplifier board. Buzz can't scream loudly enough to fly the aircraft. You want to get one volt across the headphone jack. And we need three to five volts to make these servos turn. So this little board here is a multiplexer board that allows us to both step up the volume, but it also allows us to multiplex extra channels. So normally this would just be left and right, and we'd only have two channels of control for the aircraft. And that's actually all we're using at the moment. But we built a board that allows us to turn the two channels we get out of the smartphone into four channels of control. We do that by being a little bit more clever with our square waves. So normally you'd be sending these pulses between naught and one volt. But what we realized we could do is send some square wave pulses at half a volt and a whole separate family going the other way. So we're sending a very complicated signal, which um, an op amp on board our multiplexer board can unpick these two. And it can have this one stepped up between naught and one volt. And it could take this bottom one, which is also just going naught and half a volt, and step that up between 0 and 1 volts as well. So we end up kind of dividing each channel into two and splitting them up. So only two channels coming out of the smartphone, but with an even more complicated square wave going on and this board of op-amps, we can unpick four channels. So that would mean in the future we could have um, uh, the motor control being controlled by the smartphone and a fourth channel as well. So we could move to a quadcopter, say, and we can have four channels of control for the four props on a quadcopter, which would be quite cool. So at the moment, the, the motor just runs, just continuously does it? And so for safety reasons, I always maintain control of the motor, even when Buzz is flying the plane. And mostly Buzz just glides the plane, um, unless we're having him do acrobatics like loop-the-loops, in which case I will maintain full throttle. Um, but when he doesn't need to be on full throttle, I pull it back. 
but we do have the capability to allow him to take control of the motor himself. It's just a safety thing, we haven't done that. And he doesn't need to, because he glides very well. So we take him up to a safe height. I, so I can fly the plane with this controller. Um, we take him up to a safe height. I then flick this switch. And Captain Buzz is running on a smartphone underneath the aircraft. We mount a cover underneath to protect the phone. And when I'm not flying the plane, Captain Buzz is. So as you can see at the moment, Captain Buzz is set to try to maintain straight and level flight. So as I rock the plane to a strong angle like this, the smartphone has detected that it's on a very strong roll and has commanded that it needs this wing to drop and this wing to come back up. And that's why that control surface is very high. And as the aircraft does roll back, the two control surfaces will come to the same level. There's still a little bit of a lag. We reckon about 100 milliseconds of lag. But this was the biggest challenge. When we first started doing this project, the lag was 250 milliseconds. And that meant that um, this aircraft wallowed around the sky like a pregnant duck. It didn't really fly like a fighter jet. It's much more responsive now. And it's much more responsive now because Ollie, one of the PhD students here in the lab, did some impressive work on reducing the latency and understanding where the latency is coming from. Why is this different to what people are doing with remote control aircraft anyway? So anyone can buy um, quadcopters and, and drones that have some level of autonomy. They either maintain a safe bank angle um, or they return home back to the GPS fix if they lose the radio link and things like this. So there's all of these levels of autonomy that you can buy um, off the shelf. But the computers on board that do those uh, tasks are very, very simple, and they just do those simple tasks very, very well, very, very quickly. But um, they can't be expanded to do all sorts of, of new cool stuff. So one of the reasons we thought we would see if you could do all of this with a smartphone was not just because it's quite cool to just strap a pair of wings onto a smartphone and throw it out the window and, and have your smartphone fly around, but uh, it was to look at all of the next things you could do once we've done this first layer, which is just get the thing flying sensibly between GPS waypoints and, and stably. So we can make use of the cameras underneath. We could do a navigation system based on optical flow of the scenery passing underneath as opposed to based on the GPS coordinates. There's a huge amount of processing power and there's lots of radio communication capability that we can tap into next. And we could do some quite cool things to demonstrate um, the utility of smartphone-based drones. So for example, in the real aviation world, there are systems called TCAS and ADSB that are to do with understanding where aircraft are and uh, uh, preventing collisions. So one of those systems is based on radioing your GPS position around to other aircraft, which is trivial to do when you've got GPS on board and the cellular network or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Another one is a much simpler system, which is literally just proximity based and the aircraft is warned that there's another aircraft on a collision course with it. And of course, with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in smartphones, again, it, it's trivial. These, these, these smartphones have this aura around them. They have their Wi-Fi bubble and their Bluetooth bubble. And we could trivially have a bunch of drones flying around the sky that are all turning away from any other Bluetooth or Wi-Fi source. Or we could easily make this go and find Wi-Fi and Bluetooth sources. So it could fly over a region and map out where all the Wi-Fis are underneath. So, um, we're really interested in some of the cool stuff we can do next, now that we solved the problem of just getting the smartphone to fly itself. We'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of Computerfile. You can get building your website today. Go to squarespace.com slash computerfile and there's a chance to get 10% off. So check out their website. They're trusted by millions and they're used by some of the world's most respected brands. So get over to squarespace.com slash computerfile. Start building today. You don't even need to put your credit card details in. And some of you computer files might want to check out the developers area. Developers.squarespace.com. Thanks once again to them for sponsoring this computer file video.